fortunately, Hollywood in general, the, the TV buyers, the studios have not fallen into the, the same kind of anti-Chinese sentiment. Yes, they are sometimes accused, but people who say that are a little bit naive about what goes on all the time. There's always a, a level of censorship. There's censorship in China. They're just much more public about it. There's censorship here. There's economic censorship. We don't get the money for certain things or censorship in terms of we don't want that cast member, we want this or censorship about so many different, the content. So it's something that we're used to, you know, it's just, it's not as obvious and publicized as it hears you hear, but it's just the reality. We all work within certain restrictions and constraints. Nobody just says, do whatever you want and spend as much money as you want. So I, I, I'm less sympathetic to, to that. Censorship in the US happens in different ways, often through more economic models of where money is allocated by the positions in power. And we actually had a lot of conversations about this with my previous company, Ping Pong Productions, when we toured Tim Robbins and the Actors Gang in China. And every post-performance discussion we did with the audience, there were often questions about censorship and, and how Hollywood works in the US. And Tim was very, um, clear in much the same way that you just said is, okay, we don't necessarily have a vetting process for scripts by a government body. However, there are other bodies that make decisions about what gets fu funded and what doesn't. And there are far more than purely artistic considerations in going into those decisions, often political, often simply um, bottom line. So I think that the nuance, that and not or. There's no simplicity of censorship in China, no censorship in the US, absolutely not. But to have those conversations and to see that nuance, we need to be sitting in rooms like this and with people like yourself who know both sides. So thank you.